Lexi, give mommy a high five. High five. Yes. High five with fishies. <laughs> Whoa, Lexi. Come here. Come here, baby. <laughs> Come here. All right. Yeah. She might. So, uh. All right, you want to stay, Lex? You want to come play with mom she and dad? She wants to get the car. Okay, all right. Well, this is uh, this is what you get. This is real this raw is uncut. This is this is what really happens. And uh, we're just chilling at home today. No suits for us. Uh, playing with Lexi a little bit. But we wanted to get back to you guys. Uh, because we put out a video the other day and we said, please ask us any questions that you want. So we're going to do that live right here. You haven't seen any of the questions. I'm just going to read them off of Instagram because that's where people left their questions. Mommy. And uh, uh, there are some funny ones that I read through that I was like, all right, yeah, we're definitely going to hit those. So we'll give you guys everything. And uh, uh, yeah, this is it. Just, just raw, uncut Josh and Heather at home. All right, first question. Wendy Young, Gramsci. How many hours do both of you need to put in to work on average each week? How many hours do you work? I honestly don't know how many hours I work because I just work when I need to work. When someone emails me, calls me, texts me, you know, I'm, I'm available. So I'm available seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Um, but I'm still making time for myself and my family. But I can tell you Monday through Friday, I wake up 6, 6.30, I start answering emails so I can try to get as many out as possible before Lexi wakes up. Annie, Annie Schwell underscore Martin, what don't you eat to stay in such fab shape? So the difference between Josh and I is that I use portion control, which gives me the ability not to have to work out all the time where this one over here thinks that the entire box of pasta is meant for one person. But I believe in portion control and also knowing if I'm gonna have pasta for dinner that I should have a salad or fish for lunch. I don't deprive myself, but I also don't overdo it, unlike <clears throat> some other people. She actually, I will vouch for her. She eats whatever she wants. Bye, boys! <laughs> All right, she's back. Did you miss me? I did, of course. Oh, we have so much fun together. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, Do you consider this quality time? This is quality time right now with us and our friends. And Marilyn QC15, do you compete against each other? We do. We, we actually uh, are always in competition, I feel like. I feel like we're way more competitive. And you know, well, I'd like to say competition. You can say the word competition, but I also think it's bettering each other, pushing each other to be the best versions of ourselves. I agree. Yeah. I agree. We are competitive. We constantly push each other. Uh, you know, I like to see Heather just succeed and kill it and everything, and she likes the same for me. He's uh, my biggest cheerleader. That's right. I'm he wears a tutu around the house sometimes, okay, too. Okay, now you're just pushing it too far. This is this is television, okay? No tutu. Thank you. But I am her biggest cheerleader. Legitimately biggest in the arms. And with my shoes. Uh, okay, here we go. Next question. This is from Dub underscore three. Biggest advice for a newbie in real estate, uh, both agent and or investor. What's your biggest advice for an investor and an agent? And then I'll give mine. I think we're both in agreement on this. Yeah, what's that? Do you want to say it on three? Uh, One, two, two three. three. Get an Hire me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, she's right. Get a mentor uh, in both being an investor and a real estate agent. And a lot of people ask us both because we do both. Uh, and uh, that was the most important thing in my career, uh, as well as Heather's, is teaming up with people, surrounding yourself with uh, successful people around you, a good, what I like to call the Altman dream team. Um, but really in real estate, I think the most important thing to remember is we're not reinventing the wheel here. We're making it better, but we're not reinventing it. There's a lot of successful people before us that we can learn from. We learn stuff all the time, every day, in every deal. And to be able to, in the beginning of your career, latch on to somebody and learn from them, even if you're not making money to start. Do it for free, it doesn't matter. Knowledge is, is the real payment. And uh, 
that's the best way to get started, I think. Yeah, knowledge and experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, next question. All right, next question. Uh, I'm just going through these randomly, just pulling them out. Uh, Chris underscore Dariosh. How do you become successful if you start off small and don't have a lot of money to fund being a real estate agent? It's actually a great question. You want to talk about it? How to start off small if you don't have a lot of money? Or just how to start off. I mean, if you don't have any money, so, I mean, for us, actually, when I got started as a real estate agent, I had lost everything I made when the economy collapsed. So I can tell you from experience. And then Heather. I started fresh out of high school. So I definitely had no <laughs> um, Josh and I had two different ways of starting out. Uh, I started out in Las Vegas and for sale by owners were the big thing. And so I would just door knock everybody. That's as free as it can get. And uh, for me, a face-to-face -face meeting went a lot further than cold calling. So that's how I got my start. That was good. And, and for me, uh, well, first of all, it's okay to have two jobs when you start. I will tell you, you can't truly be a very successful real estate agent. I was a Miller Lite girl while I was working in real estate. I worked the front desk at a uh, uh, at a gym, uh, and what what do you think? That's funny. <laughs> no, because it just makes me think of that one story. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we we both had other jobs as well. Um, eventually though, you're gonna have to cut that off because I do I do strongly believe that in order to be super successful in real estate, you gotta be all in, you gotta be 100%, and uh, it's not really a part-time thing as far as being an agent. And uh, so to start, that's okay. You know, sit open other people's open houses, which I'm sure we'll get into because there are a lot of questions about that. But uh, uh, that's okay. I mean, it took me six months to sell my first property. And uh, so for six months, that's zero dollars. So it's working for free for six months. And then I really didn't sell that much my first year total. So it happens to everybody. Uh, so you do have to figure out a way where you're going to eat because that's important. Okay, here we go. Um, Nicholas Poog asks about three tips on networking. Number one, pass out your cards like they got a disease. Number two, make sure you can get as many people's information as possible so the ball is in your court, not in their court. But look, some people are not gonna wanna give it to you, that's okay, but the key is to get their cell phone numbers, their information, so you can put them into the database and build your database. And a little trick that my brother and I did back in the day when we had no money, uh, you guys can use this. Um, we used to go, Matt and I, to the fanciest restaurants in LA, and we would sit at the bar, uh, and we would order water with lemon or lime in it. Uh, and it looked like we were drinking like, you know, a vodka soda or something. And we would sit there and we would talk to the other people sitting at the bar because they all obviously had money because they were eating at this fancy restaurant. Well, those are my, those are my tips for networking. You have any tips, Head? Head? Head. You've never called me Head. <laughs> um, tips for networking. You need to place yourself in situations where there's going to be people that you can either uh, use as business alliances or where you can put yourself face to face with uh, potential clients. So whether it's going to you know a community event in your neighborhood um, where you get to meet all the, the neighbors and everyone there and tell them what you do or if you're going to um, a cocktail hour somewhere, they do fun uh, happy hours everywhere. This is all free stuff for you to, to participate in. We like to go to big events um, like Art Basel in Miami every year because we're putting ourselves in front of people who uh, are buying the luxury homes that we sell. Uh, Sarah M. Saba underscore, what advice would you give to a rookie realtor who wants to achieve the same level of success as you? So when I started in real estate, uh, had no deals, had no connections, the most effective thing that I did was I walked up to one of the most successful people in the company that I worked for and I said, look, I'm your guy. Whatever you need, I don't care what it is. You want a coffee? You want me to pick up your dry cleaning? Call me up. You want me to sit uh, the worst open houses that you have 
uh, I'm your guy. I don't care if the open house is, uh, I don't care if the property's been on the market for two years. Um, I don't care uh, if nobody wants to see it and it's overpriced. If you need somebody to sit that open house, I'm your guy. You want to step up your game, get into it, and, and become successful, sit open houses. You're always going to have real buyers coming through there. And when you say sit open houses, he doesn't literally mean sit there and let people walk through. You have to be prepared, you have to be engaging, you have to know other properties in the neighborhood that are more expensive, less expensive, and in that same price range, but a different style, so that you have something else to offer them if this house doesn't fit them. Becca the Face Recca. Love that name. <laughs> I think I just wanted to say that name. I don't even know if we have to answer the question. Becca the Face Recca. Uh, no, awesome, awesome name. The huge picture of you and Heather, where you're sitting on a desk and she's standing on the desk and you're in between her legs. Whose idea was it to get that pic? And uh, what was the thought behind it? I love it. Love you for bringing that up. That was so long ago. That was a long time ago. So I can tell you how, how long, long ago. About I that. can tell you how long ago it was because the shoes that I'm wearing in that photo were um, the first present that Josh ever bought me, which was for our one year anniversary. They were the highest Louboutin <laughs> I've ever owned because Josh loved me in high heels, and the higher the better for him. So I was wearing those high heels. So. That was shortly after our one year anniversary. That's right. A lot of these people want to find out how we balance work and life. Uh, there's no time we really shut off, is there? I saw someone ask if we didn't do real estate, wouldn't we be together? Which is oh, that's an interesting a good question. Thought. Good question. Because our lives revolve so much around our career and real estate. We have so much passion for what we do. And we love to encourage each other to do better and do more and do bigger. Um, finding a balance between work and personal, um, you know, we just roll with it. So. I, I'm, I'm still waiting for the answer. What? Would we be together if we were not in real estate? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Whoa! All right, next one, P. Sherney. Heather, how'd you get started? What are some key tips for women starting out in this field? I got started when I graduated high school, got my real estate license because I love touring all the new housing developments in Vegas. Um, so that's how I jumped into it. Um, tips for women getting into real estate and becoming successful. Uh, you know, you have to be business and be professional all the time. Um, you have to dress the part and you have to have confidence. And uh, you know, for me, one thing that people find silly when I say it, but it actually is a big deal. I carry five different pairs of shoes in my car because <laughs> Shoes can really change a woman's appearance. Um, so when I'm with a family, I put on my flats. When I'm with a developer, I've got my you know work boot, work work boot shoes that yeah. I put on to walk through a development. Because if I'm trying to walk through my five inch stilettos, these men aren't going to take me serious. Also, simple tricks with your hair, tying it back, it makes you feel more professional and not as sexy, um, that your blouse isn't too low or too sheer. These are all things, it's so silly, but you really have to take into consideration. Yeah. You know, being more modest works better. All right, next question. Chris Sizzle underscore Rizzle. What's the challenges of being married to someone who is as big a diva as you are? So we both just thank you, Chris Sizzle. Divas. Chris Sizzle Rizzle. Is she talking about me being the diva? No, she she said that was to me, right? That was to you. What's the challenge of being married to someone who is as big of a diva oh, so as I'm, you? Oh, so I'm a diva. She's okay. saying. No, not, not, I mean, I'll not take it. Not gonna argue it. No, yeah. you're a diva, but you're married to a diva. That's what she's saying. Yeah. What's it like to be married to a diva? <laughs> Are we real estate divas? Uh, you know, we, we got our moments, but we, we like to bring each other back down to earth. I don't think I'm a diva. Can we just put this out there for a you second? You are a diva. In what aspect? I'd love to know. Did you have to send my assistant to go get you a coffee bean this morning because Starbucks wasn't good enough for you? <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Oh, that's so messed up. Just saying. Oh. <laughs> 
Oh my god. Alright. I'm done crying now. Um, let's see. What about this? What's this name? Lucium71. What's the hardest thing you guys had have had to adjust to after having your first child? <laughs> Okay, anybody who says having a child is easy is just flat out lying. It's a huge adjustment. Everything in life is a giant adjustment to your child. Uh, we love Lex more than anything in the world. Our life has completely turned, I don't know, I want to say upside down, but it's 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 a hundred percent different than it was before. Got a 180. Yeah. In the most amazing way, but also very challenging. It's, the difference is, for me now, and I think that you're the same, is that before Lexi, I would wake up and I went to work because I enjoyed just doing deals and the adrenaline of it and, you know, just building an empire for myself. The difference now is I wake up and every decision I make throughout the day is based on my daughter and how this is going to improve her life, how this is going to affect her, how am I going to find time to spend with her, how am I going to send her to college, how am I going to give her what she needs in, in life and be the best parent that I can be for her and make her the best person. Aww. Yeah, I feel the same way. I mean, look, the the in order to be successful in any business, you got to find the why, right? Why are you doing this? And you know, for me, back in the day when I was single, or we were, uh, it was just the two of us. You know, it was it was more money motivated. It was more uh, deal oriented. You know, I wanted to do it because I wanted the hottest new, you know, uh, AP watch, or uh, I wanted to get a cool car, or this or that. But you know. And then you look at that stuff now and it's like a joke, I mean, you know, who, who even cares about that stuff? Once you have a kid, a, a son or a daughter, it changes everything. You realize what's important in life and that has motivated me 10 times more to make sure that she is taken care of than ever, ever before. Even, it's so silly, but even now my decisions on what I'm eating or drinking or putting into my body is a big decision that affects her because I want to be around for her for as long as I possibly can. I ordered can. fries the other day and Heather looks at me and says, what would what would Lexi say? So, okay, here we go. Uh, uh, this is a good question, actually. TNG4595, uh, what would you say your spouse's biggest weaknesses are? He's got FOMO, fear of missing out on business opportunities. And yeah. Uh, it really frustrates me because he spreads himself so thin sometimes and he doesn't think about the payoff with what he's putting his time into. So, question. you know. <sighs> Nikki, Nick underscore buyers one. How do we get Josh to get a better haircut? <laughs> it resembles, resembles Ace Ventura 2 when he was in the fight scene. Um, okay, so uh, not having a great hair day, wearing a hat right now. <laughs> Uh, here's the thing, Nikki, Nick, uh, I only got one style. My hair doesn't do anything different. The only other option is what Kramer has. Uh, so when you look at the two, which I've looked next to each other, I went with mine. Cause that's it. I got very curly hair. Underscore Tenpenny, what are the three most important traits to have in order to be a successful realtor? One, be an expert. Two, be persistent. Yeah. And three, I know what my three is, what's your three? What's your third? My third is constant communication. Yeah, communication, huge. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't wanna call their clients when they have nothing to tell their clients. That's wrong. It's better to call a client and say, hey, just checking in, nothing going on, just wanted to keep you in the loop, than them not hearing. Communication is the key to getting a house sold. There may be a point in your market where you're gonna have to do a price reduction. And if you think that calling up your client and saying, hey, after not talking to them for two weeks and say, hey, so I think we should get a price reduction, they're gonna tell you to screw off. But if you're constant communication with them every few days, every five days, every whatever it is, and you're planting that seed and they, let, and they know that they're not getting the action you need, when the time comes that you do ask for a price reduction, they're gonna listen to you. And it's going to be a lot easier to do it, and in turn, you're going to sell a house. Um, Holly Dot Bab, 
Do you find your powers of negotiation come in handy when it comes to your daughter? And is she the toughest to negotiate with? She's adorable and I'm sure it's hard to say no. <laughs> so, um, the, I don't know how many decades of experience of negotiating I have, it does not come in handy with an almost two year old whatsoever. This girl is stubborn and, and she, um, she's, She's good at, at negotiating herself, so. I give her whatever she wants. Yeah, Josh definitely always gives in. There's no argument with me. I've learned to do a trade-off. So, you know, you can't have this, but I'll give you this. You want the iPad? Well, what if we settle for a coloring book? <laughs> there so. you go. I love it. Uh, Grant Rogers, seven. How long did it take you to make your first million as an agent? Um, so a lot of you that read my first book, It's Your Move, you uh, uh, you would know that I was a mortgage broker before, made my first million by the age of 26. I was broke by 26 and a half. When the economy collapsed, I lost everything. Uh, then after, in about 2008, I became a real estate agent. And uh, uh, I think that it probably took me, I would say a solid three years. All right, here we go, we're gonna end on this. Shally Abbott asks, what is the one thing in life you haven't accomplished yet that you really want to accomplish? One thing in life that I have not accomplished yet that I'd love to accomplish. I'll, I'll go, I'll go and you can, you can think about it. Because actually this, this is something that I've thought about before. Professionally, the one thing that I have not done yet which I want to do is sell a nine figure house. So that's over a hundred million dollars. There's been in the world today, only a handful of sales over a hundred million. Uh, that is something that when I finally kind of take down the, uh, you know, that beast, uh, that's gonna be something that's gonna be super satisfying to my career and it's one of the things left that I have not done. That's major. Yeah. I feel like this year, 2019, is gonna be your year. Got a nine in it. If we do that, Lexi's college paid for. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So that's my goal. That's a good goal. For me, uh, my goal that I have not hit so far is listing a major multi-unit development. I've done a lot of four to 12 unit developments. I, I love know. those projects. Yeah, you love them. Because you've done so well with your under 12 unit buildings that you've just killed. Um, as far as personally, I just want to be a rock star, kick-ass mom that my little Lexi can look up to. You already are. Thanks, babe. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, appreciate all the questions. Hopefully we got to yours. Uh, we try to get as many as possible in. Uh, hope you got a good insight into our, our business life and our personal life. Uh, I think we should do this again. Do you have fun? I was just about to say that. Okay. I definitely think we should do this again. All right, we're going to do it again. Check out the YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe, and uh, we'll see you guys soon.